I reckon we open with Tomo, because he probably goes back to the early days. Tomo, um, Red Chapel, got you to Queensland. Yes, he did, Pete Bryce. Yeah. Um, best move ever. Um, I was wallowing in New South Wales in um, doing nothing, really. Uh, uh, I was playing pretty well, but uh, they didn't like me down there. I didn't fucking like them either. You know? <laughs> So, so it was a very easy decision to come here, but... <laughs> Must be what you're wearing. Fucking hell, what are you, what are you, what are you an accountant or some shit? Uh, no, um, no, 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 it was, um, it was uh, an absolute, I won't go into it at the moment, but it was the uh, best move of my life, and uh, uh, to get me up here, Greg and Luke Cooper were the culprits. Um, uh, probably Greg more than anything, because I, I had to play against him. I played against him a few times before that. And, and I, I mean this, I mean, the people that come here today and honour Greg or, or the charity, whatever he's doing, either way, it's still him anyway, and his brothers. Um, mate, it's just unbelievable. As a bat, you know. And I, I, I didn't want to fucking bowl to him for the rest of my life, you know. Uh, and I mean this. People, people don't realise, you know, how good he was. You know, I, 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 I suppose they do the older ones that were there to watch him. But no, I watch these young blokes bat these days, and <clears throat> I, I really sound like an old guy here, but but fuck me, they got no idea compared to him <laughs> about about how to play, how to bat properly. You know, and it's funny, you know, we we sit in the, in the room today. A couple of us here, like Chapman, got a hundred on the view against the West Indies. And fucking who's done that in this room? Yeah, that's Michael Holding, Andy Roberts, all these fucking pretty Andy with no helmet, all this shit. I, I saw somebody recommend to me the other day about Killer Kowalski, whatever. Who's this kid, little Woloski cop? Or fucking. They were in the Mafia when I was in Sydney, those fuckers. <laughs> no, seriously. I saw him, I saw him got a hit in the head by a fucking guy that bowls rat power and I went, you're fucking kidding, you know. Is that what we're dishing up now, you know? All these guys getting hit in the head, you know. I, I couldn't hit these blokes in the head, you know, I and mean, that's how good a batter they were, you know. And I bowled pretty rapid. Anyway, that's enough of my show. We'll come, no, we'll come back in a second. Gary, you, um, first memories of playing in the same side as Greg. Gary Cozy had made his debut, obviously Boxing Day, scored 100. And then tell us what happened next. The next game? Well, the, yeah. Okay, the next game was interesting. We, it was the second test in Sydney. And um, there was a, an incident uh, when we went into bat. Ian Chappell was still playing. He'd handed over to Greg for, um, had to Greg to take over the, uh, the Australian Reigns and he was playing in his last uh, test, official test series at that stage. And, um, Michael Holding was bowling late in the day, uh, probably just after the tea break. And Michael, if he actually wasn't running in from the Paddington Street end, he was running in from Paddington. <laughs> um, Ian, um, Ian went out to bat, I think Ian Redpath might have got out. Ian went out to bat, first ball, nicked it straight through to, De uh, to Derek Murray, out. Right? But the umpire gave him no doubt. So Michael Holding, uh, there's a the famous uh, story that uh, he went out into covers and went down on his haunches and had tears in his eyes and Lance Gibbs took three or four minutes to run up from gully because everybody was back there, there was no one near him in covers, um, and put his arm around him and Michael went out and came into Boulder Wien again and nicked it to Derek Murray and out. Right, so it was a fairly volatile stage of the game, the crowd was going crazy, the West Indies were um, pretty up at that stage. So I'm in next, so I've gone after that. And, and holding was bowling quick, and in that innings, um, we got through that night. Uh, I batted totally for three hours for 26 runs, which usually wasn't my MO. Uh, Rod Marsh came in after me, he batted almost exactly the same time, three hours for 26 runs. While we were doing that, this bloke down here got 155 and looked like he was playing another game. 
you know, we were doing our best, and it was you know, the best we could do. In fact, I never played innings again. That 26 was probably, you know, it was a good 26 as far as I was concerned. <laughs> yeah, well, you wrote that. Well, I was doing that. This bloke got 150, and while Bacchus was doing the other thing, he got 100. You know, he got the rest of it, and it was just fantastic. And and what Tom I was saying is that um, you know he, a Greg played at another level from most of us. It was hard to learn what Greg did because I don't know he totally understood what he did. Um, and it was very hard to pass that on. You might have understood a bit of it. I spent a lot of time playing with Ian, and he was forthcoming with his stuff. But I think Greg played at a level that was like Star Trek, where you just go into another planet and you know, just kept exploring other, other universes that a lot of us couldn't even dream of. Couldn't get there. Mocha, memories of um, when you first met Greg. Um, tell us what. Tell us what that was. Yeah, well, um, I was lucky I came into the. Shield squad, and then into the, my first Shield game was the year that Cricket Australia and World Series cricket kissed and made up. So, um, and talking about John McLean earlier, the great sadness in my career really, I never bowled a cricket ball with um, John McLean standing back, but he finished the year before um, I, I came in. So, into the Queensland dressing room came Greg Chappell and Tomo and Martin Kent and, and um, the, the new Australian Kepler Wessels, right? So um, we've got these four guys that we've been watching on TV um, in the dressing room. And uh, uh, there was a state trial game, which is probably one of only twice I played against Greg, and another one was a, a club final. But um, I found myself picked in the first shield game of the season, but made 12th man. Um, and then I... I got picked to play the second game. So the first game was against Victoria, and I was 12th man. We won that, and then I uh, played the second game. was my second game of the season. My first was against West Australia, also at the Gabba. And uh, I didn't take a wicket. I think I had two catches dropped, but I did hit Rod Marsh in the head, um, which is probably the <laughs> most memorable thing. But we won the game. Um, with <coughs> Excuse me. Um, <laughs> He might have thought about it, but um, but I did hear Greg was getting interviewed um, by the ABC after the game, and we've won, and they're all the rest of it, and I just happened to be in a position to to hear what he was saying, and he was got asked about my bowling, and he and he said how that he thought I'd bowled really well, and I kept the pressure on, and um, did good, you know, and it contributed to our win um, without actually taking any wickets, and that gave me a lot of confidence to hear him say that. He didn't know I was in earshot, but. That's what he said. And uh, anyway, the next week uh, we had a game against England and um, touring side, and I got five wickets that week against England. And uh, Greg was captain, and so yeah, he was there at the start. Of, he was my first Shield captain and my first Test captain when I played my first Test. That's very cool, um, Tom. You you toured with Greg. You guys obviously in those days you spent a long time away together as mates, and you guys actually roomed together for a while too, didn't you? Yeah, we did uh, different occasions and all that, you know, but uh, Greg was actually my best man at my wedding, you know, way back, so I think that's 44 years ago. Yeah, yeah, so, um, no, no, we, we've both got the same wives, which is, which is a fucking bonus. Not the same wives, but uh, there's two of them, yeah. Let's not go there, Bunger. <laughs> well, he did say, you know, but... Uh, no. <laughs> and we, we're both fucking Leos, there's, there's a chance, you know, we're only a few days apart on, on uh, actual birthday. Not that that means any of that shit, but I, I remember Greg, I remember Greg, you know, when I first came up here, he got me up here, and I was a loose cannon, I used to love surfing, I surfed all the time, went hunting and all this, out the farm, and um, I come up here and he said, you want to come? I said, yeah, shit, I won't have to go so far to fucking noose that I come to Queensland, you know, so, and he thought, I, I must have thought I was bullshit here, yeah, but it's the first season. I'm up fishing on the Barrier Reef and he rings me up, and I know how he rang me, because we wouldn't have a mobile, so somehow I got the message, where the fuck are you, you know, it's sort of like basically the message, and I, I'm out fishing out Townsville, I know it was up further, it was um, near, but he, yeah, it was Townsville, out in the river. <laughs> and he said, where are you? I said, fuck a fishing, why? He said, the cricket season started. I've gone, who's fucking playing? And he said, club cricket. 
Oh God. So if I go what? You know, so I thought I was back in Queensland. He said, he said, the boys aren't happy, you better get back here, fucking for Christ's sake, they're jumping down my neck. And it was Bertie and a few other probably slashing the car and I, I said, you tell those dickheads, if I don't get any wickets against fucking Victoria, we're playing them. I said, who are we playing first? He said, Victoria. I said, if I can't get them out, I'm going to fucking retire anyway and do my thing. <laughs> so he said, for Christ's sake, but this is true, you might think this is bullshit. But I'm, so I won the play. And then we have a trial game. It's Greg Chappell's 11 versus John McLean's 11. So Greg, you, you know how you pick people? Greg's picked me first. <laughs> right. Because he knows I'm not going to be fucking happy, you know. <laughs> so my clients pick whatever and all that. Anyway, Phil Carlson was out there in the, in the middle of the gallery. And Phil Carlson came in and Greg thought, well, he said, give this fucking work out. He, looked, he said, I want to see what I can do. I fucking knocked him out in two balls. I missed him with the first one. Here, and he's dead on the pitch. <laughs> and he's come up to me and he said, for God's sake, he said, give my work out, don't kill him. <laughs> Anyway, Port Nine went off and anyway, this is the sort of shit we got up to. And then we're playing another shield game out here, playing against somebody. He won the toss and said, I'm in. I always hated bowling first, I suppose. I wanted to play the game, but you just get into it, sort of thing, and all of a sudden we're bowling and it was favourable conditions for a bowler. But I'm bowling shit, it's going I was bowling quick, but they were going wild and everywhere like that, and I'm bowling no balls. And he's not out. He was like the school headmaster, come on. Fucking much gear, no all this shit. <laughs> we, I forget who we're playing, but the non-strikers near us, and Mal Johnson was the, wicked, was the umpire, and, he, and he's come. what the fuck's going on? These are the true words. I said, mate, I don't know where this fucking ball's going. He said, that's fucking obvious. <laughs> <laughs> But what I meant was it was going the wrong way to what I was meaning to go. And I said, how do you hold the fucking thing for an ounce swing? <laughs> Which is, there's only two ways, that way or that way. But it, but it was going the wrong way. And he's got, oh, hello, fucking. And the non-striking batsman was dying to laugh, but he wasn't going to. <laughs> he's going to get down that end and I'm going to kill him anyway. <laughs> so, anyway. He fucks up back again, and as he goes up the pitch, uh, he, he got to about here to the other side of the table. I said, Stan, come back in. He said, now fucking what? I said, and I'm always. I said, how many steps was I taking last week against that other one? This is how I used to talk. And he said, what are you talking about? He said, the fucking no balls. I said, was it 11 or 13? He said, what are you taking now? I said, 11. He said, why don't you fucking try 13 and it's like, <laughs> But it's not that easy. <laughs> it's not that easy. But this, this is the shit that used to go on between us, you know. And, and like, like Jeff has said, it was, it was very funny because Greg Chappell had a different level, you know. You'd go out there and you'd play with Greg and it was just unbelievable, you know, the way he batted. And I remember one day we were playing, is it all right if we're going again? Keep going, hey, play. just start eating, I was going to just keep talking. Yeah, it's all done. So we're playing New Zealand, New Zealand. We're playing at Christchurch, Hadley and all these, and they were really fantastic players, you know. So they had a real good team. And they used, they were one nil up, they won at uh, Eden Park. <laughs> Terry Alderman had bowled somebody out, out and they go, the guy said the wind blew the fucking bales off and all that shit. Yeah, no wonder we lost the test. Anyway, we get to Christchurch and we're fucking pumped. I'm pumped up, you know. And it had a little bit of a reach there. And uh, anyway, we're batting, we're in the shit. Because I'm batting with Greg Chapel. That tells you how we're in the shit we are. And he's gone, just fucking stay in there with me. I thought, oh yeah, <laughs> hang in there with God, you know. So, yeah, fucking, he's talking to the devil and he's a fucking God, you know. How do I, I got okay. He said, you'll only have to face a few balls, but just, just fucking watch this. Yeah, this is what he said. I remember the words. So Richard had his bowling to me. And he, he kept coming up to me at the end of the over. He said, watch this. And he had two blokes out on the hook. And he said, watch this, I'll hit it between them in the air and hopefully they fucking run into one of these two heads. 
and he did exactly that. <laughs> Maybe twin. Adley's doing his head. He got a, what'd you get, Craig, that day? 107? I, I, yeah, yeah, but I got about 30, whatever. About 100 in a session, that's not bad. That was the best show I've ever seen in my life. And he was commentating. He was telling me he was going to hit the fucking ball. I was, I was struggling to fucking block the ball. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not leaving one below. I went out in the second day, uh, we bowled, and I got five or six to shoot, uh, scared the shit out of me on this pitch, and we won the test match we needed to. But it was just unbelievable to play with these guys, you know, that I, I was involved with these blokes here in my time. Fat Cat, he was a younger guy, new kid on the block, but all the other stuff. Oh, I'm just only happy to turn up and do all these shows, you know, with these guys you meet. Thanks, mate. Um, Coes, you shared all the wickets in a one-day international with Green Chapel one day. Yeah, funny, but that uh, was funny, actually. <laughs> Who would have thought? It wasn't... Uh, what, five for 18, you took, at yeah. Ed Buston against yeah, England? Yeah. And Greg took five for 19. Five for 19, yeah, he took quite tight. Carl took five for 16 <laughs> once, but we won't talk about that yet. Keep going. And, and what happened in the match? Well, we got knocked off. We, uh, <laughs> we got about hit. We had 92 or something like that. We had a, yeah, good players have the luck. Um, yeah, look, and it just sort of typified, you know, how Greg was as a player well, and captain because he asked me to bowl, which was fantastic. It didn't happen that often. But you know, the ball was swinging about a bit against the palms at Edgbaston. And um, we were getting it get halfway through, carved our way through the, you know, through the, uh, the English batting, scythed our way through, making paces. And um, Tony Greg was batting. And I was, it was eight ball overs back in those days. So I was on my eighth slower ball for the over. You know, these guys reckon they've got 16 slower balls. I had 10 overs of slower balls when I was bowling. And Greg is absolutely smashed this about an inch and a half from the ground, I reckon. And Greg's at short cover. He's taken the catch, which was okay. That was good. I was pretty happy about that. Greg, as he's hit the ball, has just moved out of his crease about uh, half a metre. Greg's not only taken the catch, he's run him out, hit the middle stump, and have bounced back between his legs a short cover. Oh, wow. And um, Rod Marsh has come up this year. I can see that. I said, yeah, I saw the first. I hope he's not run out because I want the wicket first. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the sort of thing that, you know, that this man over here had, had the ability of doing. And it wasn't, you know, all the easy times for Greg. And you don't mention the. You know, the seven or nine in a row, Baggy, you said you were going to bring that up. No, I don't mention that. Not no, yeah, but, but, um, but that's the sort of stuff he does. And what about Slipfields and Ever, Gary? I mean, we talked about, oh, we talked yeah. about that as well. Oh, yeah. The two chapels and Rick Hart and that sort of stuff. I mean, probably nothing's been any better than that. No. Well, Greg Ritchie said that to me last night. He said, I don't, I never saw a better fieldsman, and Michael might touch on that in a second, but he never saw him drop a catch, he said, in his, the whole time. Um, Mocker. Greg's captaincy. Tell us a little story about that. Yeah, well, as I said, um, <coughs> Greg, Greg was my first Queensland captain and my first test captain. Um, of course, we've all probably, some of us more than others, no doubt, but over the years there's always been the thing comparing Greg to, to Ian as a captain. And, of course, Ian was captain in the West Indies in 73 and lost, um, lost his two best bowlers early on uh, with injuries. Uh, and, and won that series and, and full credit. I mean, hell, what, a, what an achievement. Um, but there was a thing that, that Ian made things happen more than Greg, and well, I, I just say bullshit to that, you know, because um, it's not, not what actually happened. But Greg had a different demeanour to Ian, and that probably gave an impression. But uh, I, I've got two good stories about his captaincy in terms of making something happen. And one was a game, Fat Cat was playing, I think. Queensland were playing Pakistan uh, season 83-84 here at the Gabba. And so it was before the first test. So it was, you know, let's say early November, um, 83. And we'd got a few early wickets, but uh, we're having a bit of trouble dislodging Wazim Raja, who was a left-handed middle-order batsman. And uh, Wazim's having one of these days where he's hitting the straight ball and missing most of the rest. And there's the odd nick and nudge. And anyway, he's been out there for some time and he's uh, 
you know, getting some runs on the board and we can't get him out and we're beating the bat three balls and over. Anyway, I, I bowled this over and I waited for Greg to come up from first slip and, uh, and for myself to go down to fine leg at the end of the over and I said, mate, um, this, guy, this guy's just not going to get out. I think I'd beaten the bat three times that over. He's, uh, you know, got to do something different. And Greg said, uh, leave it with me. So I went down, filled it fine leg, came up, started the next over. And I said, righto, well, what have you come up with? He said, well, look, he's... And, and that over, in between, he brought up his 50, see? He said, he's just brought up 50. He'll be feeling pretty good about himself. Up until now, any time we've bowled him a bouncer, he's ducked. I reckon you bowl him a bouncer, he'll go the hook shot. Right? So, bowling him a nice, high quick bouncer over leg stump, I reckon he'll go the hook shot and we'll get him caught behind off the gloves, hooking. Right? I said, okay, well that's better than my idea, so tell, tell Ray's a third ball. Right? Ray Phillips was the keeper. So the first two I pushed right across him and he flashed at them both, played and missed. So it's the third ball, I come in and uh, I've got to say, I nailed it. I got it absolutely perfect, bouncer, fast, over leg stump. He went for the hook shot and we got him caught behind hooking off the glove. So, <laughs> I mean, seriously, you talk about him nominating where he's going to hit the ball when he's batting, uh, he, he came up with that. So, um, And another, th another great story, which I've got to say, I'd actually forgotten about. Um, so, this goes back to... Um, 1985 in England and I was playing um, Central Lancashire League cricket for Oldham and uh, I got this letter in the mail inviting me to play in a game of cricket coming up uh, in a month or so's time uh, up in Northumberland this is before Durham had county status in county cricket and there was these two old gentlemen, nickname was Calla and they owned a travel agency called Pegasus and to give the North East of England some international cricket they sponsored this uh, cricket festival every year and they invited a World Eleven to play against the, the current England side and the um, ECB, English Cricket Board, were all supportive of this so they sent the full England side. So I got invited to play in this, I thought shit yeah I've got to, got to be part of that. So Greg's playing and, and captain. And um, I probably won't remember everybody. Farouk Engineer, the great Indian wicketkeeper, was wicketkeeper. Um, uh, David Hooks played. Um, Michael Holding, Roger Harper, Alvin Kalasharan. Um, I think well, Clive, and uh, Richie Richardson. I think yeah. played. Um, so we've got these two one-day games, and in the evening in between the two games. Uh, we had this banquet at, a, at an old castle, so it was a pretty special trip. Anyway, on the first day, we batted first, and um, any time any of our players got to 50, they dong one in the air and, and got out. And we finished up with 250, 260, pretty good score. Now, this pitch is flat, flat, flat. It's like bowling on these boards. You couldn't get anything hardly above knee high, so um, not too exciting to bowl on. Uh, Anyway, they, they come into bat and uh, Mike Gatting, who was their captain, um, decided, well, we'd better win this game and Gatting gets 100. Now, blokes, we had three or four could have got hundreds, but they got themselves out. We, we have got the shits, big time. So, oh, that's, that's another guy who played in the game, the South African Eddie Barlow, um, great South African. Now, Eddie's 46, I think, at the time. Um, and not playing regular cricket. So overnight, this plan gets concocted because we're out for revenge tomorrow. Now this, I think Ian Botham didn't play, but pretty much it was the full England side. It's, and Australia's touring. It's an Ashes tour. So it's pretty much um, the England squad minus Beefy. So it's a strong side. And we've got some, like Greg had finished playing, and Eddie hasn't played for... 10 years and Farouk Engineer hasn't played for 15 years and anyway so we batted first tomorrow uh, the next day again and nobody threw their wicket away now I can't remember the exact scores but we put a good score on the board 
And then we set about playing the game a little differently. So uh, Michael Holding and Rackerman didn't open the bowling. Chapel and Barlow opened the bowling and bowled 10 overs straight each, <laughs> which Greg handled pretty well, but poor old Eddie <laughs> he had to get carried off after his 10 overs. Anyway, they were, I think they were two or three for 60 odd because these English opening batsmen, they didn't want to get out to Chapel and Barlow, so they're playing the block shot and they you know, didn't want to get out to these guys. So, so then on comes Holding and Rackerman and there had to be uh, a fair breeze coming straight down the ground. So I, of course, had to bowl into it, that's fair enough. On day one, Michael was just sort of trundling. Michael is now off the long run and means business. Well, Michael got six for something at less than 20, um, including Gatting's off stump cartwheeling, which was a beautiful sight. Can I tell you it's quite fun when you're playing with these guys, holding legs on your side, not in the opposition? Um, I, I got two for 30 odd, I think, and we've smashed England. I don't think they made 100. I mean, it was so exciting to be part of that. Um, and that from what happened yesterday to what we did to them the next day, and that was pretty clever cricket, eh? So uh, I reckon that's creative, yeah. That is creative. Um, great story, Carl. And obviously Greg means a hell of a lot to you and to Tomo and also to Coase. Thanks for coming out.